You know, wisdom is such a beautiful thing, is, and the fact that it's so beautiful it actually is a requirement that we all should actually have. It's something that we all should actually want to strive to get, and this should actually be something that we all should actually want to get, because that's the only thing that's really going to keep us actually in good standing, is for as everyday living. One thing that we have to understand about wisdom is that wisdom is not necessarily, you know, concerned with the spiritual aspects, although it does have a place in spiritual warfare. But wisdom actually in this case here or in this video is actually going to be concerned with more about the natural. And again, this is just nothing more than a follow up to a previous video that I've done where we talked about the issue of being stupid. I was actually kind of motivated to do this video because, again, I think with uh, with these videos that I'm actually wanting to do here, it's going to be kind of centered around really being wise. And I think my next couple of videos that I'm going to do is going to kind of really follow that theme. But again, nothing, you know, I just want to just do this video because, again, this was, uh, again, something that I feel that really was just in the making. It's just the fact that I just didn't know that it was going to be this soon, you know, for the most part. But again, when we're talking about wisdom... Wisdom is such a beautiful thing, it's such a necessary thing, and the fact about it is that the book of Proverbs is actually dedicated its whole purpose to actually teaching you how to be wise. And one of the things about it is that when you're actually on that road to being wise, you know, there are lots of things that we actually have to, you know, to combat, whether it be, you know, through, you know, our parents, through our everyday dealings with people, relationships, that sort of thing. And for the most part, all of those actual those concepts and those issues in life actually has a common element, and that is wisdom, because wisdom in and of itself is going to teach you how to actually uh, bear those type of things and how to actually with you know go through those things and do it in such a godly way that you have no way of messing up. But again, delving deep into the issue with wisdom here, you know, for the most part, when I was actually, you know, wanting to talk about wisdom, you know, I was like, okay, well, there has to be some things that actually make up wisdom. And for the most part, that's the reason why I actually came up with, you know, three, if you will, properties of wisdom that I believe that are very important that actually really make up wisdom, you know. And the funny thing about it, again, is that when I was actually going and, you know, in the making of this video, you know, I actually sat there and allowed the Holy Spirit to really speak to me to give me what to say. And the beautiful thing about this is that anytime you sit there and actually let, you know, your mind actually delve into the Word of God, where you actually open to really hear what the Spirit has to say to you, it actually has a lot of intelligent things that it has to tell you. Very intelligent, very charismatic, you cannot beat it whatsoever. This is the type of education that folks would go to school for. But, and the thing about it is that they even go to seminaries and everything. But the funny thing about it is that, again, all of that is not even necessary when you actually, again, begin to allow the Word of God to saturate your mind. But anyway, when I was actually, again, making this video, I allowed the Holy Spirit to speak to me. And basically, this is what it gave for me to say or to write down, which is the properties of wisdom, which is made up of three components. You have the ability to know, you have the ability to learn, and you have the ability to really to understand. See, one thing about it, again, is that, you know, it's very beautiful because, again, wisdom is not something that actually that is, uh, I would say, that just came from out of nowhere. And the thing about it is that it's a lifelong process that we actually have to, you know, to go through in order to, you know, to gain some sort of, you know, know-how about something. And again, like I say, you know, it takes years and years to sometimes master some things and sometimes to become wise in some things. And it also sometimes takes sometimes repeated processes and procedures in order to gain wisdom. Like I say, everybody doesn't learn the same way. Everybody does not comprehend and understand things the same way, which is the reason why wisdom is so valuable and the fact that, you know... Once you spend time with it, as the book of Proverbs encourages us to do, you begin to appreciate the byproducts, if you will, of wisdom. And the thing about it, again, is that, you know, keeping along that same, same thing as far as what I've just been saying, to become wise, number one, you have to actually be able to say, okay, I've gone through experiences in life, you know, you know, live through experiences. You know, I've been through things, so I pretty much know what I'm talking about. And see, one of the things about it, again, is that you have to be, again, here we go, wise with, you know, who you actually uh, tend to take up time with, who you actually choose as your mentor or your role model, so to speak. Because you have a lot of people out there that want a title, but they've never been through anything. So guess what? They don't really even have any real life experiences to take you through to actually teach you something or an important aspect about life, you know. And the thing about it, again, is we, we have to actually choose our role models very carefully because again everybody out there is not 
out there for your best interest. You know, and here we go. That's where wisdom comes in again. It teaches us how to make those wise choices about who, you know, we should go to talk to. You know, again, it's all about being very, you know, strategic about, you know, again, who you choose to spend time with. Another aspect to becoming wise is that you're able to teach others the lessons learned from those situations. So basically, here we go again. You know, you've been through something. So now I'm not telling you something because I saw someone else go through it. I can give you more insight because I know what it feels. I've been there. And the thing about it, again, here we go, you know, you can't actually get instructions from somebody who is just actually doing or telling you something on the fly. Like, a, for instance, I can't, somebody can't tell somebody how to go through what it feels like to be divorced unless they actually went through it themselves. You know, it's good to sit there and want to comfort someone and tell them, oh, it's going to be okay, or it's all right, or whatever. But they're still not going to be able to be a true help to them unless they were actually able to go through it and tell them, okay, look, when you go through divorce, you're going to be feeling this way. This is how you're going to do afterwards and this, that, and the other. I know because, again, I've been where you're getting ready to go. So I actually know exactly what you're going to go through. And I not only know, but I can tell you how you're going to be able to come out if you do this, that, and the other. Again, you have to be able to have lived through and been a part of that process in order to be able to offer real world experience on how, you know, things are going to go. And the last part that I actually wanted to talk about, again, is the, uh, the live by, uh, yeah, live by example. You know, again, you know, you have to be, you know, if I'm telling you to do something, that means I'm automatically assuming that, hey, you must be doing the same thing too. Otherwise, you wouldn't be telling me how to do it. Like I said, we have to be careful about this because, again, all wisdom is just a lifelong process. It's not something that is actually going to, you know, uh, spring up overnight. It's sometimes it takes, again, people a lifetime to, to become wise. And sometimes it takes people just a little time at all. It all depends upon, you know, again, what you want to do, how badly you want it. Again, that's what I would like to call raising wisdom. Again, you're going through processes. You're going through something. And the thing about it is that it's not always a good thing. You know, getting on the road to becoming wise is not going to always be something fun because you're going to go against things that you're foreign to that may leave you with a bad taste in your mouth and, you know, may lead you to wanting to cut people off and stuff. But see, all of that is all a part of the process. You're being, you're, it's like the maturation process is beginning. You're becoming wise. All it is is that you're actually in the baby stages of wisdom. You're, you're going through things so you can actually get to that uh, attainment. And the thing about it again is that you will never actually get to where you can say I'm wise about everything. Only God can say that. And see, the thing about it again is while you're going through, you're learning again, you're learning processes. You're becoming, you know, you're, 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 you're really becoming more knowledgeable. You're maturing where not only are you able to actually be used spiritually or physically, I would say, again, then all of that physical will actually begin to pour in on the spiritual aspect and you'll become a better all around, well-rounded person that God can use. So again, we have to understand, you know, wisdom is very much needed. But the thing about it again is that, you know, Folks really just don't want to have anything to do with it. And I believe the reason why they don't really have anything to do with it is because they really don't understand it. When you don't understand something, you're not going to want to have, you're not going to want to spend any time with it. You're going to think that it's a waste of time. So with that being, you know, with that in mind, I actually wanted to go back and really make things, you know, a bit simple, you know, just kind of go back and just kind of break things down. Because again, that's how I roll. That's how I do things. That's how I am able to understand. That's how I am hoping that other folks can understand. And me. So when we're going back and rolling it back a little bit, let's go back to again to the issue of wisdom with the uh, the properties of wisdom where we were saying that knowledge, number one, is the one of the first components there that we're talking about. The knowledge aspect, you know, basically the ability to know is what we're talking about when we're saying knowledge. Wisdom, number one, when you're talking about knowledge, you're learning. You're learning the know-how about something. You are, you know, being introduced to the ins and outs about something, you know, whether, you know, how it's ran, what makes it work, what makes it not work, you know, this, that, and the other. And the thing about it, again, is that that's one of the main components, the first steps to becoming wise is, first of all, you have to be able to be knowledgeable about something. I cannot tell you how to solve an algebraic equation if I've never taken an algebra class. You know, I've taken it, but I'm just saying just for the sake of this video. You know, I had to have been introduced to the concepts, the basic language of that sort of mathematics, so I can become knowledgeable on how its concepts and how I can actually apply it to different situations to solve mathematical problems. So again, here we go, making it plain. Knowledge is nothing more than the ability to know. Like I say, we, we're, gonna, we're getting somewhere with this, okay? So just stay with me. 
Now, what we got to understand, too, is that knowledgeable or being knowledgeable about something is very versatile. And what I mean by that is that, number one, we have to understand that in and of itself, knowledge is power. When you know something, you are considered to be powerful. See, one thing about it, again, is that the enemy wants us to be dumb. Not only spiritually dumb, but actually physically dumb in the natural as well. But see, the thing about it, all of that is actually dependent upon you. The book of Proverbs actually teaches us and tells us time and time again that knowledge is out there with her arms wide open, wanting to talk to people, wanting to get them to know her, wanting to get them to be, you know, her friend, an intimate friend. But the issue is, is that you have to want to really have that motivation to want to become wise. See, we're living in a day and time now where nobody doesn't want to sit down. Nobody doesn't want to be told or taught anything because they feel that I've lived long enough. I've gotten this, that and the other through school. So I should have that enough with, you know, that coupled with my personal possessions and the people that I know that should be enough to sustain me and see that is a dangerous way to think because again, you know, nobody again knows everything. So here you go out there with your limited thinking, thinking that you know everything. And next thing you know, you don't gotten yourself into trouble. But again, knowledge is power. Again, it can be good or bad. But it's just the fact of knowing something, that's where we're coming from in this particular stage, right at this particular point in the video. To know something means that you, you know, you're not a dummy. Nobody can just come up and just tell you anything about a certain subject because, again, you know a little something, something about it. So you can't try to fool me that way. And again, like I say, it's a beautiful thing to have knowledge about something because you're actually able to share it. You're actually able to, you know, to give it to people, you know, you're actually able to sit down and really let them know the ins and outs about things, you know. But like I say, you know, it's all about really wanting to not let someone else, you know, go out there unprepared. And see, one thing about it, I believe is that if you love and care about someone, as the Bible, uh, you know, tells us to do that, you actually, you know, Take the time to educate them, to equip them. Now, that's not to say that they're actually going to want to accept it. But the fact about it is that it's important that it, they at least sit down and hear what folks has to say. And again, we, we see it time and time again. A lot of our young people are leaving us so soon. A lot of our older folks, too. But our younger folks are the main ones that are leaving us so soon. Because, again, they did not actually uh, want to sit down and talk to someone who, may have, who could have possibly saved their lives through the act of actually sitting down and talking to someone about something that they may be going through. You know, like I say, a lot of folks, young folks these days, they figure that, you know, they can draw a lot off of folks their own age. And in some cases, in some things, I can say, yeah, but what they're needing really is that old school wisdom, the old school wisdom where, you know, the where it, things were just given to you raw or sat down and talked to you raw about the, the issues of life. You know, this, that, and the other. It may have a new spin to it these days, but it's nothing It's nothing new under the sun. You know, they really need to understand and really sit down and talk to friends, you know, parents, uncles, aunts, those who have been around and survived a whole lot of things. Because if, when they sit down and really be quiet and listen to them, they'll see that what they're telling them is exactly relevant to what they're going through today. It's just that in these days and times, it just has a different spin on it, you know. So like I say, it's nothing new under the sun. The Bible tells us this. But like I say, again... The young folks have to be open, have to open up their hearts to actually have someone to talk to them. Like I say, you know, a lot of them, again, they figure that, you know, you're too old school, you know, get with the time. But the thing about it is that by the time, you know, you come to the knowledge to know that, hey, you know what, I need to, I should have sat down and listened. It's too late sometimes because most of the times you're either dead or locked up in jail. So, you know, whose fault is it? You know, it's, it's one of those things to think about. But even in the act of sharing knowledge, we got to understand, too, that sometimes knowledge can actually have a bad thing as well. You know, it can have a, a, a really a bad connotation to it as well. And that's what I would like to call the curse of knowledge. You know, one thing that I have to go back to is that, you know, anytime, you know, I think about the curse of knowledge, I always go back and really think about the story of Adam and Eve. You know, we all know about the story of Adam and Eve where, you know, God actually forbade them to eat from that certain tree, the tree of knowledge, because in that case, they would actually have their eyes, quote unquote, opened so they can actually see things for what they really are. Not that God was actually trying to blind anyone, but the issue is, is that God did not actually want us to actually be ashamed of our bodies and who we are and everything like that. Because again, remember, we were made wonderfully in his, in his image. And the thing about it again is that, you know, the enemy, here we go again, comes up and 
you know, tricks Eve, saying that, you know, if she ate from that tree, that, you know, she'll be on, you know, quite knowledgeable and really on the same level as God. But see, the thing about it again is that when the enemy tells you things, he doesn't never let you know the outcome or the after effects or the byproducts of being disobedient. And next thing you know, she ate from that tree of knowledge, that fruit from the tree of knowledge. And next thing you know, here we go, the downfall of man. Sometimes, you know, being knowledgeable, again, is a good thing, but sometimes you can know so much where it gets you in trouble. And one thing about it is that anytime I actually think about that curse of knowledge, I always go back to that, you know, that, that sitcom that comes on, The Big Bang Theory. And I always, you know, pay attention to this specific character. I forgot his name. I think Sheldon. Yeah, I think that's his name. But the issue is, is that I pay attention and I study him. You know, I really sit there and I study him. And it's like he is very smart. You know, he's very attentive. You know, he's very uh, sharp, if you will, in the books. <laughs> But the thing about it, again, is that when you actually ask him to really function and do things actually in life, outside or away from the books, he's very what we would call green. He doesn't know what he's doing. He actually has to get advice. You know, and the thing about it, again, is that I feel that we have a lot of people that are like that these days. They know so much, but yet still, when it comes to the basic things, they really can't function. You know, and to me, that is just a crime shame. I mean, like I say, to me, you still are unbalanced, in my opinion, because, again, you are not well-rounded. You only know one half of the puzzle, but not the complete set. But again, knowing too much sometimes can cost people their lives. You know, sometimes it can cost you relationships. It can cost you a whole lot in the end. That's why, you know, the Bible also tells us, you know, sometimes to study to be quiet. I've never ever really said too much about that particular concept. I may have in past videos way back, but what does that actually mean, study to be quiet? That means that you don't have to give an answer to everything. Just because you may know about it, here we go, that doesn't mean that it deserves an answer. You know, and <laughs> a lot of people can really benefit from that. And I know in certain situations I can as well, because again, I'm not perfect. I still fall. I still sometimes have a tendency to run off at the mouth at the worst time. But again, the thing about it is that through constant meditation and reading of the word of God, he teaches us when it would be the appropriate time to let someone know what we know and when to just be quiet and let things ride as they are. It's one thing, and the Bible again tells us, you know, it's best to be thought of, you know, as a fool, you know, by, you know, how's that saying go? It's best to, you know, to be quiet and be thought of as a fool and open your mouth and remove all doubt, something like that. But you all know what I mean. But in the end, it's just best sometimes, you know, to listen to God and God will actually let you know when to speak. And even sometimes we be wanting to talk and we be wanting to let folks know, hey, you know what? You think I don't know much about this. I know more about it than you think I do. God says he knows that. But the issue is that by you opening your mouth and letting folks know that you know that, you may be setting yourself up for a more uh, harmful situation. That's why God is here to protect us. That's why it's, he says the... The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So again, if you fear the Lord, you're going to respect him. And when you respect someone, you're going to listen to what they got to say because you know that they have your best interest at heart. And that's all that God is saying. I got your best interest at heart so much that I have to actually teach you how to actually regulate your tongue, how to live in this day-to-day -day life through the concept of wisdom. But again, you know, some folks may take a hold of it and some may not, you know, like I say, but in the end, you know, you open your mouth before it's time and you'll actually see the consequences. Then you'll be like, oh, you know what? I Maybe I should have kept my mouth closed, you know, and should have just played dumb. I do that a lot these days, you know, because again, and I feel, and, and, and to tell you the truth, it has actually saved me from a lot of issues, a lot of disappointments, a lot of altercations. Not that I'm afraid, you know, to scrap or whatever, but it's just the fact about it is that, you know, when you listen to God and just be still and know, because he tells us that too, be still and know that he's God. We will actually save ourselves from a whole lot of issues, we, you know, that we would have normally have gone through, you know, again, just by being quiet. You know, you don't have to let everybody know everything. You know, even smart people let the other, the, the enemy know or make, let the enemy think he has the upper hand. And that's the thing about it that I'm learning. And, and it was a process for me, again, going through life, trial and error. Here we go where I would open my mouth before it's time because I felt like I was being insulted and I want to let someone know that, hey, you know what? You don't know that I know as much more than I do. I know more about the situation than you do, you know? And like I say, it got me into a, 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 a bit of a trouble because again, I know with me, I can sometimes, you know, have a fire. My mouth can be, you know, quite unruly and I'm willing to admit that. And that's something that I'm having to go to God to every day, 
you know, to help me to maintain and, like I say, to keep me in check. But, like I say, it is what it is. The Bible says confession is good for the soul. So, that's my bit of a confession of one of the issues that I have to, that I'm still currently trying to overcome. We'll put it like that. But, again, knowledge, you know. Sometimes it's good to know things and sometimes it's good to just be quiet because, again, folks have a way of actually trying to figure you out by the many ramblings of your mouth. Um, the second aspect that I actually wanted to go to and talk to you about, again, is uh, about uh, as far as the properties of wisdom, is the concept of learning. And what is learning? Okay, well, learning is the ability to retain information or... Here we go, the ability to retain knowledge. Here we go again. So basically, we're still not getting away from knowledge. Knowledge still has that little stickler in there somewhere along the line because again, learning and knowledge are synonymous with each other. You know, it, it, you can't have one really without the other. And the thing about it again is that, you know, we learn, you know, in different ways and different formats. You know, we have different modalities of learning, you know, where we have online, we have the traditional reading of the books, we have, you know, just everything now, it's just, it's, it's everything, the dynamics of really getting information is changing. Some of it may be, you know, for, to make it a lot easier, and some of it may end up being, you know, where it's a bit more complicated. But in the end, you know, the concept of learning, it never stops, you know, and the thing about it again is that it's never going to stop because again, we are constantly being exposed to things, newer things that we may not be, you know, used to. And that's where you have the key to actually learn more information, you know, so you'll know, you know, how to deal with things. Because one thing that we must know is that change is always constant. And, and when that happens, again, you're always learning new things. Like I say, it can be in the classroom. It can be at, in your home. It can be in your church, you know, but anywhere you go. Like I said, you're always learning something. And because of that, again, you know, what I came up with is that, you know, what are the requirements of learning? Well, number one, in order to learn, first of all, you got to be motivated. That's my main thing, is that if you're not actually wanting, you know, really wanting something, you're not going to really want to pay attention to it, to, you know, to whatever it is that is being taught to you. I, you know, I think about, you know, when going back to school, you know, when I was in high school and everything, and I used to love, and I still do love math. I really do. And the thing about, again, you know, in class, you know, people would come in there dragging and everything. Oh, here we go again. You know, he got to learn something new and stuff. And I'm like, wow, I don't understand why they feel that way because I think math is fun. You know, I like the equations and the different ways, you know, that you can learn how to break down algebraic functions and all this other type of stuff. I was a bit of a nerd. In some cases, I guess you can still say that too. I don't know. But anyway, you know, I actually love learning. I'm not saying that I'm nobody special, but when you actually love something, you're going to automatically be motivated to do it. And the thing about it is that even if it's something that is a little bit more difficult, your motivation and your love for it is going to require you to actually do all that you can to actually overcome the difficulty of it so you can actually learn, for the most part, what it is. And basically, again, a lot of folks really, they first of all, their heart isn't even in it. So the first excuse that they can have to say, you know what, I give up because I don't understand, they're going to take that road. But see, one thing about it, when you're actually wanting to learn something, you're going to stick with it. You're going to study. You're going to do this, that, and the other. You're going to spend intimate time with it until you actually master it. And when you master it, next thing you know, you know what? I, I was able to do this. Let me see. What else can I actually go and learn from? You know, I, there's got to be more stuff that I can learn. And the thing about it, again, is that that's the key. Motivation is key. You cannot learn if you don't want to learn. That's basically what I'm saying in a nutshell. Here we go again, trial and error. You know, you go through things, you know, in life, you know, you made a mistake, okay? You had to go through the consequences of it. So through you going through, and it's not um, easy in a nice way, you know, in a situation to be in, you're learning. Here we go again. So you're learning that, hey, you know what? If I do that, this is what's going to be the outcome. So guess what? I know that through that, my knowledge has taught me that if I do this again, this is what's going to happen. So I know by doing that, that, that's going to happen. I will abstain from it. I won't do that again. Again, I guess it depends on the situation. You have some people that go through the same thing and they keep going through it. It's like they don't learn anything. Why? Because I don't know if they don't have any common sense or they just enjoy going through for the sake of going through, which to me is just stupid. But you have a lot of people these days that enjoy it. I don't know. It, it is, it's just one of those things. I don't know. But also, too, going back to the issue with motivation, 
you come down to the third point there, this caveats with that, the proper attitude. Again, if you come in there with an um, attitude that, hey, it's already defeated before it's already started, I don't expect for you to learn anything. I cannot sit there and actually motivate you to learn if you, again, don't show the proper attitude to want to learn. You got a lot of people that may need help in a situation, but the issue is that before they actually ask for help, they'll lash out to someone to try to make it feel as if it's their fault, as if they're not doing enough. But the thing about it, again, and I'm learning every day, and I even tell people because I work in a customer service industry, is that in order for me to help you, you got to show me the proper attitude that you want to be helped. You don't come to me with an attitude huffing and puffing and all this other type of stuff and expect for me to overlook all of that, although I can, but just generally speaking, as far as dealing with people, common sense wise, if you want to be helped, first of all, show me that you want me to help you. That will motivate me, here we go, to help you. It's just, it's just common sense stuff, people. It is not that hard. We make it hard because, again, we want to do our own thing. But again, going back to the forefront, learning requires you to show the proper attitude. Teachers, and my heart goes out to teachers these days and time, they have such a battle in the classroom. When I was going to school, you know, we didn't have all of these issues and stuff with teachers that they have with their students now. You know, where a lot of them come to school just to be a class clown. A lot of them come to school just to actually show that, you know, to try to act like they rule the class and all this other type of stuff with all of these bad, you know, just everything, just horrible, just horrible mannerisms, things that, you know, that you would think they, that the teacher, that the students would have been taught at home not to do. They're bringing this stuff in the classroom where the teachers have to deal with it. So guess what? A lot of the teachers, they've adopted the attitude. You know what? If you don't want to learn, then guess what? You don't have to. There's the door. My thing is that, though, a lot of the teachers are actually being nailed because, again, they feel that they're not doing all they can. But I, in some cases, believe that there's a great deal of teachers who are doing everything they, that they can to see that their students succeed. And the thing about it is those that need extra help, they are willing to sit there and do whatever they can within their power to offer that help so they can actually see them master the material. But again, it all goes back to attitude. You show me that proper attitude, it doesn't matter how long it's going to take. And I thank God that he's a God of mercy. Even if, you know, we keep messing up, God says, you know what? You're trying, you're trying, you're trying. And I see that you want to learn this. And the thing about it, God says, you're going to get this. You're going to master this. So let's just go back through it again. You know, and I, and, and I, and like I say, you know, even people who are considered geniuses, they're not smart in everything. They need help in things as well. That's why, you know, even in those type of people, you know, God still tells us, you know, it's not always what it seems. Everybody has to have, have to actually have the capacity to learn because you don't come here knowing everything. You have to sit down and be taught by someone who has mastered the material already. Humility, again, going back to motivation and proper attitude that births humility. You got to be able to be humble. You got to, here we go, the proper attitude. You got to show some respect. Again, going back, you're not gonna learn something from somebody that you don't respect. If anything, you're going to get up and walk out the door and say, you know what, he, <laughs> I guess, you know, he figured that he's talking to me, but the issue is that I'm not interested and you bounce. But the issue is that that's not very smart. That's not very wise. You know, when you show humility, that's when you actually begin. That's the, one of the basic foundations of actually having God to work with you. You know, when you actually have this proud look where everything is everything, you know, I don't need to learn this because I have that. God pretty much has tossed you to the side and moved on to someone else. Because, again, they want to learn. And the funny thing about it is that humility means that I come to you with a clean slate. I don't know this thing. I am still a wretch undone. I am still on the wheel waiting to be molded. So get lets me know right there that God is ready to use you. You've told God that, okay, Lord, I come to you. I need to be educated. And that's where God will actually really rush to you to start to work with you. And I, and I thank God for that again. Like I say, you know, there's just certain things that move God. And one thing about it is that humility is one of the main things that move God. I ain't saying that you got to be the top prophet or the top preacher or whatever. Just show some humility. And God will actually help you whatever, whatever it is that you need help with. I promise you that. And the last point, learning requires the willingness to accept correction. That goes back to the last video that I did where we were talking about the fact of being stupid. You know, stupid people don't like to be told their wrongdoings and stuff like that. They figure that, you know, you are wrong for pointing out their imperfections. And see, one thing about it, again, is that if you want to actually be wise, you number one, you have to know that you don't know everything and that when you do something, you're going to mess up. 
So guess what? God has to come behind you and correct you through the concept of, as we stated in the last video, rebuke. So learning, you're, you're learning, okay, God is not pleased with that, so I know not to do that again. Again, you're learning. It's a constant process, and it's going to last all the way until the time that you take your dirt nap, all right? So, again, sticking along that concept of learning, you know, again, we're doing it so often, like I say, and we're doing it in so many different ways and in so many different forms. And like I say, it's just, it can also sometimes seem like, you know, it's just that it's just never ending. And the thing about it, if you be truthful about it, it is never ending. You know, you never stop learning because it is, it never stops teaching. And I, I love that quote, never stop learning because life never stops teaching. You know, again, Everything that you go in life, you know, is teaching you, again, about something, whether it be your environment, people, situations, you know, our government. Like I say, it doesn't matter. Learning is just not in the classroom. It's not just reserved for the classroom. You take that and you can take it to all areas in life, you know, and that's what I like about it. It is so versatile. Now, let's go on to the last portion here of what we were talking about as far as the properties of wisdom, which is what we would call understanding. One thing about it is that understanding actually sums up everything that we've talked about in this video. You know, if you want to break it down and really into simple mathematical form, to understand means that you have knowledge about something, plus you know how you, you have, you learned about it. So you couple that learning about it and person having to know about it. Now that means that you understand it and you're able to apply it. It says here, understand equals knowledge plus learning or being able to apply what you know through what you have learned. This is so amazing. The Holy Spirit is just so beautiful on how it breaks things down and how it's able to really to make things make sense. Perfect sense. Being able to apply what you know through what you have learned. Mm. Whew, I just, it just just amazes me you know like i say you know i don't know uh, people may look at this and say you know what you're crazy well you know what i'm crazy in the right way i guess you can put it but anyway moving along here when you're actually saying that you're understanding something that's the key to pretty much everything that means that now you've mastered the concept of whatever it is that you are actually wanting to become wise in you know again not saying that you won't still slip up but again, you know, we have a God that's there that's faithful to forgive if we're faithful to confess our sins, as the Bible tells us. So to understand something means that you're at the peak of everything now. You're at your peak of learning because now, again, you know all about the concepts. You know all about how, you know, how things are being done because, number one, you went to actually get knowledge about it. And plus, you pretty much learned what it was all about. So those two things coupled together is going to let you know that, hey, okay, what? You know what? I know a lot about this particular subject. I, I have become wise in there so I can actually go and teach someone else how to understand how to overcome this particular issue or what it's all about. Another concept, another thing that we got to understand too, and I had to go and put this on the back end right here, is that to understand means that you have experienced the results of an action and have gained knowledge to know that it is either something that is favorable or unfavorable enough to either repeat or leave the action alone altogether. So that means that when you're going through something, you're, you've been through something and you already know for the most part that, okay, you have a lot of people, and I'll go and use this example. You have a lot of people these days going and having babies out of wedlock, sleeping around, being a whore, if you will, I'll say it, you know, being all of these things. And the thing about it, again, is that, you know, it's not to say that you're looking down and talking about somebody. But the issue is, is that a lot of our young folks, especially in the black community and the young black community are going around and having babies. And like I say, next thing, you know, they figure that, you know, and a lot of them, I don't understand. They already use the excuse that, you know, I wasn't taught about sex in the household. And I'm like, and I've actually ran across someone who actually said that I'm like, in this day and time, you mean to tell me your folks did not even sit down and even tell you or teach you about the birds and the bees and the fact that, you know, if you want to have babies to wait until you're actually really ready, both in the mature sense and in the financial sense. You mean to tell me that no one actually sat down and told you to wait? You know, I'm not there to castigate or judge anyone, but I found, I kind of found that hard to believe. But the issue is, is that when you actually go and do these things, number one, uh, in most cases, you know, there's going to be some issues that come behind that. So now, okay, now that you become knowledgeable about sex, you know how to have it. You go out there and actually 
you know, do these things, you have and go out and have sex with someone, you know, who a one night stand or whatever the case may be, and you end up with a baby. So now you got to know, okay, I knew about sex, I know how to apply it, you know, and next thing you know, now guess what? I have a baby now. So now that I have a baby, I understand that I have to do all that I can to provide. I am now not a child. I have to grow up now really fast along, you know, so I can, you know, be the parent, you know, to this child. One thing about it is that, you know, children are a blessing. Like I say, you know, and the thing about it is that that will never change. You know, it's just that the actions that we do sometimes to bring about that life is what God is condemning. You know, again, you know, we were put on this earth to multiply and procreate and everything like that. But the issue is, is that when we be sneaky about it and be it and do it using sinful tools, if you will, that's where it can cause problems. So now, you know, this lady or whoever it is that is in this situation actually understands now, okay, I have, I've actually now gotten myself into a situation where I have to learn. And again, you know, you learn through the school, as they, as they say, of hard knocks. So basically now, and we pray that these people actually have support systems all around because they're going to need it. Because again, nine times out of 10, and I'm not saying that's the case for everything, but they're going to have, you know, to put someone on child support because I see it all the time and have to sit there and wonder, okay, you know, what's life going to be like now that I'm a parent at such a young age? You know, I'm going to be missing out on all of the things that my peers are doing because I chose to do something that I really did not understand that would, you know, uh, that would cause, you know, this type of consequence. And I'm like, I don't understand, you know, sometimes the mind frame that if you know if you go out there having sex, chances are a baby is going to be made, especially if you're actually having unprotected sex. You know, but like I say, you know, sometimes, you know, the wisdom of these young folks these days, I really, it just leaves me boggled in the mind. Like, how could you have not known? You know, but like I say, again, I'm not here to judge anyone. But anyway, keeping on to the theme of this video because we're just about to the end. What we got to understand is that we're going to come across a lot of things that in life also, too, that may throw us, a, you know, in a bit of a tifty, if you will, where we just don't understand. Like, you know, and I say it a lot of times, you know, Lord. I've done all this. I've done all this. I've done what you under what you told me to do, but I just don't understand, you know, why the situation turned out this way or why it turned out that way. And one thing about it, God says that, remember, my ways are not your ways, neither your thoughts are my thoughts. So even though, you know, you may have done all, that doesn't necessarily guarantee that it's going to have a, always a happy ending. And that's one thing that we have to understand is that we would like to think that when you come over to the Lord's side, you will not have to experience pain. You won't have to experience heartache. You won't have to experience all these things. But God has prepared us and told us that if his son had to go through it, then guess what? Arm yourself likewise, because you're going to have to go through it as well. And it is not a fun thing. It is not a, a uh, you know, an enjoyable experience. But guess what? All in all, you're going to become wise. Here we go. Because of it. Becoming wise is going to all sometimes cause you to shed some tears. Again, ask the Lord why, you know, and if you've never gotten to that point, keep living because it will come. And it's just, you know, it just lets you know that, okay, this is just the will of God concerning you. And this is something that you just have to go through. And the thing about it, again, is that God says, I'm here to help. But again, I cannot remove this block because, again, you said that you want to be like me. So I have to actually put you to the test. I have to put you through the process so you can mature, so you can become more and more like me. You will never become me, but you'll begin to get more of my traits in you. Again, because of these issues that you have to go through. And God says you're going to go through them as long as you be wise enough to listen to me. And I can tell you how to overcome. This is such a beautiful lesson. The last point that I actually wanted to make is that when you understand something, when you've gone through something and you understand what it means and what it's all about, all these entities and everything, the ins and outs and that you, what you've learned from it, you're actually able to be able to be in a position to explain it to someone else. So they'll be able to catch on and understand it as well. Like I say, it's nothing more sadder than someone who constantly goes through something. And the thing about it is, is that they actually understood the process and, and the consequences of it, but they're actually still willing to keep making the same mistake over and over and over. It, to me, that's just wasted energy. I mean, and like I say, we're living in the days where you just have different types of mindset, weird mindsets of people. But the thing about it, again, is that 
you know, we just have to know that that's just, we share the earth with those type of people. But anyway, I hope that someone got something out of this lesson today and more lessons to be soon coming in the future. Be blessed, folks, and have a nice day.